I'm Amy Cherry. This local news is a service of Flagler County's Toyota dealer, Beaver Toyota, here to wow ya. Supporters of a transgender student along with at least one opponent of transgender policies dominate the discussion at a recent Flagler Board of Education meeting. John Arking reports. The parents of a transgender student who formerly attended Matanzas High School were at the meeting to update the board on the status of their son, Elliot Bertrand. Bertrand had previously attended the school as a girl but began transitioning in 2018 and asked to be referred to by a male name and pronouns. Elliot now attends Flagler Palm Coast High School, according to his mother Jennifer, who told the board that the atmosphere there is much more accepting and asked the board to consider new policies so as to avoid such issues in the future. Despite everything, our ultimate goal is still for the county, the board, the district to adopt procedures. We know there is a policy in place. We want the procedures and the guidelines to be implemented to the teachers and the staff so that they receive training on how to assist our LGBTQ youth. But also in attendance was the Reverend Charlene Cothran of Evidence Ministry, who said while she's not a homophobe, she ardently was against the district adopting such policies. While Cothran spoke, though, students, teachers, and friends who support the students stood and turned their back in silent protest. Is this what you want in our district when we begin by changing our policy? And there's a reason why policies have not changed in our state. Because the people, representatives and senators who represent the people, have decided against it. They said no. School board member Colleen Conklin said the superintendent, James Tager, was reviewing procedures from other districts on the issue and that while the district's policies are inclusive of all students, at the end of the day, it's not about what anyone personally believes. It's about ensuring the safety of all students. From the WNZF Newsroom, I'm John Arkin. Traffic deaths are down in Flagler County. Tony Magoo has the details. There has been an exponential drop in the number of fatality accidents in Flagler County. Let's go inside the numbers. Traffic fatalities in the county decreased by more than 36% in 2019 compared to 2018. There were 12 fatalities in 2019 compared to 19 in the previous year. And since 2017... Traffic fatalities in Flagler County are down a total of 67%. We have Flagler County Sheriff Rick Staley with us on the phone. This could not have been accomplished without the cooperation of our drivers. The education component that our public affairs office provides and our enforcement, our traffic unit, and our other deputies. The number one cause of crashes is distracted driving, which encompasses a myriad of distractions, including cell phones, car radios, interaction with passengers, and more. Please drive responsibly, and remember, don't text and drive. For Flagler's Morning News, I'm Tony Magoo. Flagler Schools named their Teacher and Support Employee of the Year. The 2020 Flagler Schools Teacher of the Year Award goes to Michelle Kulikin. She's taught science at Buddy Taylor Middle for 13 years. She also acts as advisor to the after-school STEM club. After receiving her award, Kulikin says it makes her heart happy to work with such talented students and an amazing administration. This year's Support Employee of the Year was Lynn Mello, an office specialist in the district's plant services department. Mello has worked for Flagler Schools for 26 years, beginning her career at Old Kings Elementary before moving to plant services eight years ago. She was in total shock when her name was called. Flagler Schools Superintendent Jim Tager says Mello's personality brightens a room, and she's always willing to lend a helping hand, no matter where it's needed. Both Kulikin and Mello go on in their respective categories to compete at the state level. What is the job of the Flagler County Chamber of Commerce? Chamber President and CEO Amy Stafford said that it is the Chamber's job to identify what it wants to be and make it so. The real key here is planning that I'm going to say the D word, development, but carefully identifying what do you want to be as a community and and maybe looking at some best practices in communities that are similar in size and demographics and geography. Stafford said getting those people out of someplace like Palm Coast, where they've been all the time, and getting them to go to other places will help them see that development and economics are good things together. To listen to more with Amy Stafford, download the Flagler radio app and then go to the Free For All Friday podcast. Tomorrow, the Chamber as part of Economic Development. From the WNZF Newsroom, I'm Deb Albertson. And now you're up to date on Flagler's Morning News. I'm Amy Cherry.